Hello everyone and welcome back to another video. Today's video is on how to granular synthesis. We're going to be learning about how to make granular synthesis work, how to make granular synthesis songs, and just kind of what granular synthesis even is. So let's get into the video. So we're in the DAW and this is Fruity Granulizer. Now I like to use Quanta personally, but Fruity granulizer will work. In Quanta, you just have a lot more options about how to granulize your sound, and you have LFOs and matrices and envelopes and whatnot, but uh, Fruity granulizer is able to do some of the same stuff. What is a grain? What does a granulizer do? Well, what a granulizer does is basically take a sample and then chop it up into a bunch of tiny little bits and then play them back at intervals that you can either set to a, a set amount or you can set them to random. I like to use randomly distributed grains to make kind of more atmospheric sounds. So what we're going to be doing is take something like a vocal. Um, maybe we take a hook or something. That sounds pretty cool. If we just have some MIDI playing like this, let's have it on C. But if you have this pan here, and we change this grain spacing, and this wave spacing, and then change this to random, you can hear that it starts to change kind of what is uh, being played. And I can actually change where the start position is as well, and have it loop if I want to. Pan changes basically how much it's going to be played on either your left and right ear. If you change pan all the way up, that means that each grain is going to be played either totally on your left or totally on your right ear. Depth is uh, basically the difference between your quietest sound and your loudest sound. And then random is the spacing. So if I have it played like this, it's going to be playing uh, completely random sounds, but in this way it's going to be playing exactly on the marker here, which you can see. Grain spacing is going to be how much overlap you have between the grains. Hold is going to be kind of like how long each grain is being held down. Attack is just uh, how fast uh, your sound goes from 0 to 100, basically. Cool thing is, when we pitch this up, we can also hear what it sounds like pitched up. So this is really good for learning the fundamentals of granular synthesis. You can get some pretty interesting sounds out of that. Um, personally, like I said, I like to use Quanta, so the rest of this tutorial will be using Quanta because uh, Fruity Granulizer is pretty limiting. Um, but you can carry that information into probably Ableton or any other DAW's default uh, granular synthesis. But here in Quanta, you can do a lot more. So this is what Quanta looks like right off the bat. Let's take our sample and drag it into there. Uh, and you can see here is our sample. Uh, and we have a lot more options here. We can change the length of each grain, the shape of each grain, and that's gonna be kind of our envelope, uh, how many grains there are, our tune of our grain, and uh, our width. So again, that's gonna be kind of like how much uh, you're gonna play on either left or right. Your level um, and position. And this is really nice because all of these have randomized uh, next to them. So if we have like completely random sounds, uh, and then we turn this oscillator off because uh, we don't want any other sounds being played. You can hear that it's kind of just like all over the place. But if we turn this tune here, turn this position down, turn up the length a little bit, we can get some really cool textures. And the really cool thing about this is it uh, visualizes kind of like the randomness, which I really appreciate. You can also create uh, automation for, for example, the position. So in, if we want to have the song play backwards, we can create an automation clip and then we can uh, position it like this. And then if we have our MIDI, we can have the sound play backwards while also being granulized. If we want to make it even more backwards, we can change the direction at which the grain, grains are played. So we can change it to reverse. What I like to do is uh, modulate the source position here, but make it so it's a uh, sample and hold. So if I just change one point to hold, and then I change this point. Can get some pretty cool sounds of that. We can also layer it with uh, different octaves. One of my favorite things to do though is resample things and then put them into a granulizer. So for example, if I open up some project like this, so we can hear in this song, there is a bunch of drums playing, uh, but for the purpose of this video, I wanna take out all the drums and I just wanna focus on the synths. And let's just take a portion of it because I don't want to steal the whole song. I just want a little portion of it. 
uh, that we can use for granular. Um, once we export that, and once we grab our clip and then import it into Quanta, uh, we can play around and put some notes down. And then add some automation to our song here. Let's add another granular synth in here and then have something kind of playing more in the high end. So now that we have our guitar and key, I want to have this like really spread out so we have the potential of playing at any point in the, in the loop. And then I'm gonna make sure that we're only hearing the 2k plus range. So now we have this like really beautiful sounding intro to our song. So something similar we can do to granular, although it's a lot more manual, is take a slice X and then drag some type of vocal into it. And you can see it creates these markers here. Now these markers can be used to trigger that part of the sample. So I can do something like that. And then we can come up with a really cool melody. So yeah, that's kind of how you do granular synthesis. I hope you learned something in this video. Uh, this is a very highly requested video and I thought I'd just cover kind of how I use granular synthesis and how I know a lot of other people use granular synthesis. I think you have a lot of options when using granular synthesis. So I'd make sure to experiment with it and see what you can do with it because what you might do with it, it might be a lot different from what I do. So as always, I hope you learned something and I will see you in the next video.